hello everybody it's me again twenty from Caesar graphics welcome to my channel if you're new don't forget to hit the subscribe button and remember to ring the bell so you will be notified when i post my tutorials welcome to my how to use background series and without any further ado let's jump into today's tutorial so this was the design sent to me this week Let's go straight to my slide and I'll share with you why this design is not successful. The design is not balanced because some elements are justified to the left and some are centralized. This is not professional at all. The design lacks unity because elements are too close to each other. The background is too busy and is affecting the element on the foreground too many different typefaces because um if you look right here this is one typeface here this is another one here and um and this is another one right here and this one also is different from this so it's not professional at all so we have some elements that are not necessary on this project all right and when you use elements that are not necessary on your project it's taking away the message on the project because if you look right here we have this cloud here we also have this um, um cutting here and the floor here is not necessary the use of the clock is not strong to pass the message uh, so i understand the clock was used because of the hour that we have here but it's not strong enough to um, pass the message when a design is out of it is useless give room for space because space attract readers how by making the page on threatening accessible and manageable so the application i'm going to be using to achieve this project is going to be adobe photoshop so here we are now on photoshop so i'm going to create a new document so i'm going to use a5 for this project and um I'll call the name of the project A Mr. T. And my resolution is going to be 300. And I'm going to say create. So before I start placing the element on the project, we need to create a grid. So the reason why it's always good to use grid is to, so as to make your project have good structure. I'm going to go to view. I'll select new guide here. I'm going to turn on the column. And I'll make this 10. All right, and for my row, I'll make it um, 14. Now, the reason why I'm using this type of grid is because I noticed that the information on the project is much, so I always like to use um, grid that will give me the room to be able to um, place my element and still have enough space. So I'm going to um, change my gutter to 26. The right that controls the space between um, these lines here. All right, so. I'm gonna make this 26 so I'm controlling the one this is for this one is for the columns while this is for the rows and um, for my margin all right I'm gonna make that um, 90 right yeah 90 is fine 90 90 and 90 right okay so the next thing I'm gonna just do is to hit okay it's now time for us to start putting our contents So you need to make your design balance, which is the advantage of using guides.
I'm trying to make the title align with the grid. So you need to make sure you're holding on shift when you're adjusting the tracking. And I'm going to do the same thing for the leading. I'm going to put a title in a group. So the shortcut for that is Ctrl G. All right, so I have it in a group now. So I'm going to call this the title. Okay, so next is to put the date. So I'm going to move that to be somewhere around here. So I always like to duplicate my layer when it comes to text so as to save me time. So playing with the super font family for your project is going to make it simple. One of the ways to command attention to your design is to play with the title.
so the reason why i'm giving space between my title the date and the subtitle is to create unity all right because making everything too close to each other is not going to help the project So I'll put control G for the dates. Okay, and uh, for the logo, I'll put that in a group also. So I'll call this logo. All right. To hide the grid, so I'm going to hit control H on my keyboard, and now we have this. All right, so now we need to start playing with the color. So to bring back the grid, just hit Ctrl H on your keyboard and then you have your grid back on your projects. So I believe the butterfly alone is enough to catch attention and pass the message faster. So the font I'm using for my social media is the Socialico. So you can always download it online. So I'm going to use the free transform to scale this big. I'm just going to position it here. This is the final result of the project. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. And if you have not subscribed, remember to hit the subscribe button and remember to ring the bell so you won't miss any of my tutorials. I'll see you guys again in the next one. Peace.